What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. We have a bunch of stupid mail to open. So we're going to open a bunch of stupid Magic the Gathering mail. Let's get started. So this is a lot, a lot of little packages here. Always a pleasure to get a lot of little ones or one package that has a bunch of cards in it. Those are, those are the those are the preferences. Oh, I like this one. Rares like this are nice because you only need one of them, you know? We got this borderless Mount Doom, so that's pretty sweet. And uh, this is, I, I got one of these for the cube and one of these for constructed because it is seeing play in constructed. What else we got? Another Sauron's Ransom. We went over this card previously. Probably one of my favorite cards in the set. Uh, it's a great card draw spell for three mana. Three mana instant speed, draw at least two is very good. It's funny because you look at cards like Divination, which are kind of like the standard for drawing two cards. It's two cards, three mana, instant or sorcery speed. That's your standard, right? But then you have a card like Sauron's Ransom, and you also have Flame of Anor, which is the three mana blue and red card. And... That also lets you draw cards at instant speed. Two cards, and it does more than that. Like, both of these cards are draw two at instant speed, and then do more. And then we got these two copies of the Shire. Shire into his battlefield tapped unless you control a legendary creature. You can add a green, or you can tap it and an untapped creature you control to create a food token. So, basically, it's a good replacement for a forest, right? You just replace a forest with this ideally it will come into play untapped, but if you're playing it on the first couple turns or on an off turn where you're not going to spend all the mana, that's cool. You get a free a free land that does something. So, not bad. Not bad, he says again, as if the cards he ordered were completely unknown. Like, I'm glad we opened this. Oh, look at this. Look at this spicy gentleman. You guys probably saw it right there. It's the one more Bowmaster. Again, this guy is absolutely ridiculous. And sometimes, you know, when a card feels off, this one does not feel off. Oh, no, I don't have it over here. <laughs> I'd have to go get it. Sometimes I'll check it. I'll do it in a, in a future video. I'll, I'll use the little microscope and we can check the, leg the uh, not legality, but the... Uh, authenticity of some cards. So, yeah, Orcish Bowmaster. Another, another solid gentleman brought to you by tcgplayer.com. This this one had a rough had a rough go. This is this is how it came. I have not opened this one yet, but luckily every time a package comes like this, everything's in there. Like like this is I could literally just pull it out almost without even opening it but you know it's, it's taped in there again taped on the inside clean on the outside is that how it goes ice cream paint job however that song goes okay so now we got this guy here we can open. Bunch of cards here. Looks like mostly commons and uncommons, which is great. You want to complete those play sets, you know? I just like having things. Like, the things I order don't go directly into decks. They don't go directly into the cube. I just like picking up cards um, because I like having them. Uh, I'm, I'm the kind of player that plays a different deck at FNM every single week when I used to go... If there's an RCQ this coming weekend and I want to play on it on a whim, I don't want to be like, well, I'm at the mercy of what cards I own. So I like to be prepared and have the cards. So I usually pick up things that are going to see play. Let's see what we got here. Samwise the Stouthearted. Uh, when Samwise enters the battlefield, choose up to one target permanent card in your graveyard that was put there from the battlefield this turn. Return it to your hand, then the ring tempts you. A 2-1 two for 2 with Flash when the ring temp with with a you know i don't even know how to phrase this where the ring tempts you is good enough but then you're just like getting a creature back too so it's like basically a draw one it's kind of like a 
it's kind of like a snapcaster mage for creatures like instead of returning uh instead of recasting an instant or sorcery you're getting a creature but it's also um a two one that that's like probably maybe unblockable because of the ring tempting you or maybe you're looting for troll of kazad dune doom kazad doom this guy's just a, a six five that can't be blocked except by three or more creatures and he has swamp cycling because of course he does that's why this guy goes into the living end modern rangers firebrand we saw this guy another just fantastic shock variant i mean like except for the fact that it's sorcery but it kind of has to be because what is this picking up that's like preventing the focus is it literally just my hand do you think what if i do this yep that did it um yeah because if this was an instant it would just be uh strictly better than shock i imagine I can't see a reason why it wouldn't be. So, you know, like when you're designing a card like this, you have to have one downside. Either it costs more, there's limitations on the target, it's a sorcery instead of an instant. This one, there's no limitations on the target, it costs the same, and it's just a sorcery instead. But the ring also tempts you, which is the upside. That's the trade-off, right? So you're trading instant speed for the ring tempting you. Here's three more Samwise the Stouthearteds. So five total, but again... These are uncommons. These are like 20 cents, you know, but one is going in the cube or the cube sideboard, as we say, the cube board. I use cube Cobra from all my cubes and they call it the maybe board. And I, I kind of like that. That's cute, but don't call it the main board. Magic doesn't have a main board. It's called the main deck. That's a lesson for you guys. Gandalf's sanction three mana deals X damage to target a creature where X is the number of incident and sorcery cards in your graveyard. X as damage is dealt to that creature's controller. I think I saw this in a list, so I just picked it up. And like, I guess if you're hitting like a one toughness creature, like you can deal like five or six to the player for three mana. Glorious Gale. I don't know. I don't think I've seen this played in any decks, but it's just remove soul with upside. You know what I mean? Like it, this is just literally remove soul. But it's got an upside if you counter an Omnath, if you counter a Vincer, something like that. Um, so I picked them up. They're probably like three cents each. Council's Deliberation. This is a card I've seen seeing play in Legacy of all places. Two mana draw a card at instant speed. Whenever you scry, if you control an island, you may exile it from your graveyard. If you do, draw a card. Like, that's great, right? The second half is just free. But the decks I've seen it in literally just have preordain as their scry i think they also have like consider but it you know consider is not scry it's surveil so i don't know it's really interesting like it's 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 interesting that they're relying on just preordain if i'm missing something let me know if you guys know what i'm talking about but there's there's definitely been legacy decks with four councils of del deliberation and they're just relying on preordain to trigger that second half and then the rest was two more gandalf's sanction so so then there's orders like that, which is like, oh, it's only like a couple, a couple schnickels. Oh, this one's, this one's taped well. It's okay, I'll go in through the bottom. Now I'll just rip the side off. I always get stressed when I'm making YouTube videos. I'm like, is this taking too long? Are people going to be bored? Are they going to be mad that like I didn't pre-open these? I don't want to pre-open things. That removes kind of the, the fun, right? Shipping shield. My favorite, as you guys have, have been aware. All right, what do we got here? Aragorn, King of Gondor. Look at this four, this three color. This is a three color Aragorn. There's also a four color Aragorn. Vigilance and Life Link for a four, 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 four. Okay, you got me. When it enters the battlefield, you become the monarch. Okay, seems good. This is also from the Lord of the Rings Commander sets, not the Lord of the Rings basic set. And whenever Aragorn attacks, up to one creature can't block this turn. If you're the monarch, creatures can't block this turn. It's really good. As you can probably assume, I got this for my cube. I wouldn't be surprised if this just saw play in, in a constructed format. I guess it's only going to see play in Legacy or Vintage, right? Because like the commander sets are only legal in those. But I don't know. This card seems pretty good. Becoming the monarch is already fantastic. And there's ton, tons of cards that, that see play just because they make you the monarch. But then on top of that, you also have, um, like, their creatures just can't block. I don't know. That's pretty good. Oh, another. Look, Flame of an Ore. Exactly the card we were talking about. I think there's three of them in here. So three more. 
I did get four of these uh, for constructed. I also got one for my vintage cube and one for my Innistrad cube. Innistrad cube um, is my Innistrad horror cube. It's mostly Innistrad sets, but I've also added cards that have like a horror-y kind of thematic aspect. It also has like a wizard theme because there's a big wizard theme in Innistrad for the blue creatures. So I'm actually going to add this to the red. There's a red blue spells matter archetype in that cube. So I got, I got these for that. And last card is a Pippin guard of the Citadel. Again, this card's fantastic. I mean, mother of runes is great. Giver of runes is great. Pippin guard of the runes is great. Uh, this card's just phenomenal. I mean, the only, the only downside is obviously that he's two colors, right? Like that's it. This is going to be tricky to open. <laughs> This we might need some scissors for. I have my little, I have my little box cutter here. Actually, we can try box cutting it. Where's the? I don't even know where the opening is. Oh boy, what a development! That actually worked pretty well. He said before, slicing his hand open. Famous last words. Okay. Oh my god, look at this thing. This is just a... How do you even... How do you... I don't... Oh god, I think I found it. Okay. Let's get this out of here. Oh boy. Okay. Well, at least it... It's all coming together now. It's all making sense. This is probably gonna... I have a couple... Quite a few bubble mailer orders in this... In this batch. So they're probably gonna be a lot of... I think this might be the last Bowmaster I ordered. Maybe there's one more. I can't even keep track of how many I've picked up. But yeah, this card's obviously a staple until it gets banned. So we'll see. Um, I, not, not really much I could say about that guy. We all we all know what he's doing. This one also taped very well. This is actually from game the Game Grid in Logan. This is my friend Jake's store, actually. And Jake was like, hey, buddy. For your birthday, here's a gift certificate. So I picked up a bunch of cards from Jake from his store, the Game Grid Logan. It is a plug because he's one of my better friends. So there you go. Now I'm really hoping this order is correct, though, because it's going to look really awkward if it's not, you know. Okay. Well, this is well sealed. Let's put it that way. I'm like trying to... Oh, God. Ugh. Oh God, I'm like trying to go around with this. I don't even know the best. I don't even know what the best practice is. I'm just literally cutting until it opens. All right. So we have Repudiate Replicate. This is a card that's been seeing some play in modern. It's like 50 cents, I think. Counter target activated or triggered ability. So the first half is like a two mana stifle. Second half, create a token that's a copy of a creature you control. So War of the, no, not War of the Spark. Guilds of Ravnica? Ravnica Allegiance. Got two of those guys. And then we got Lightning Angel. This is for pre-modern. I have like, so here's the funny thing. I think I have like eight copies of Lightning Angel. Four are from Time Spiral, the original Time Spiral, but the B sheet. The the like the retro frame cards from Time Spiral. Four are Japanese. And I just wanted the Apocalypse version, so I picked up four of these. Shaman on core. This is another pre-modern pre card that's seeing play. Redirect one damage from Shaman to a creature you control. Redirect to Shaman all damage dealt to any one source from any, any one source. To any, one, to any one creature from any one source. That's a mouthful right there. Uh, I think this is part of like some combo deck that has like Pariah in it. It's probably an infinite combo. Urza's Workshop is a card from the Brothers War Commander set that I saw, it was like, I saw playing like one deck, but I was like, oh, that seems cool. I'll pick some up because they're like 20 cents each or something ridiculously cheap. So like the cost for me, it's funny because like, I'm like, oh, I'll pick up really any card that's like under a dollar. I'll just pick up like a play set of it. If I, if I see it seeing play, because it's just the enjoyment of receiving that card and getting a little package and getting that dopamine hit outweighs like the cost to me. I'm like, oh, that's cheap enough. Cool. So this is just literally like add one mana for each Urza's land you control. <laughs> Activate only if you control three or more artifacts. So it's got Metalcraft. And you're basically like just supplementing your Tron lands. Here's a Powder Keg. 
at the beginning of your upkeep, you may put f a fuse counter on powder keg. Get out of here. These guys are these guys are stealing the focus here. Is my hand? What is what's what is it? What do you got here? Okay. Then you can sacrifice powder keg, destroy each artifact and creature with converted mana cost equal to the number of fuse counters on powder keg. This was a card that came out before, like Ratchet Bomb and even uh, Pernicious Deed. Both of those kind of follow the footsteps of powder keg, where they're a card that references the number of counters on the thing or the, the amount of mana you've spent and you get to destroy engineered explosives is also another card like this where you're choosing um the specific uh converted mana cost of the thing you want to destroy so this is another pre-modern card that I, I picked up um i wanted obviously this would be beta if that was reasonable but i think beta howling mines are probably like 800 bucks i imagine it's a very very iconic card and typically with these retro frames um brothers brothers work cards i would get the schematic version because i think those are super cool but for pre-modern i kind of just want the original art and the original version so i got these these are og mark pool versions because i just think this is like this howling mine art is super classic and honestly like the retro frame on this it's the same vibe as as the as like a beta right so i got three of those guys to finish my playset. one sword of forge and frontier this is going in i have a copy of the live the dream cube uh made that's a magic online cube that comes around every so often it's super fun so this is an update for that so is storm carved coast so is timeless lotus this card i love i also added this to my vintage cube i think it's i don't know if it's better than gilded lotus but it's kind of adjacent to it um the ability to untap and cast like i also have a five, I have a five color theme in my cube um so this helps you cast any five color spell just by untapping it which is super cool and that's also in the, in the uh live the dream cube so is leyline binding and finally, Toxril the Corrosive. This card is shockingly expensive. I say shockingly, and then I'm like, oh yeah, Commander exists. It's not that shocking. And so this is just a 7 mana, 7-7. Seven, seven. At the beginning of each end step, each end step, not just yours. So in Commander, if you're playing a four-player game, four triggers, put a slime counter on each creature you don't control. Creatures you don't control get negative one for each, negative one, negative one for each slime counter on them. So one cycle of turns... And they all get negative four, negative four. Whenever a creature you don't control with a slime counter on it dies, create a one, one black slug creature token. And then you can sack a slug to draw a card. So this is obviously a blue black commander, but it's like kind of ridiculous. I Sometimes I'm, I'm like, there's cards where I'm like, is that, is that really what it does? Put a slime counter on each creature you don't control. That's, that's so wild, dude. And it's like, it doesn't even affect your, just like, it doesn't even affect your creatures. Like it's not even non-slug creatures. It's just, Everybody else's shit. I guess it costs seven. I guess that's it, right? Like, it costs seven. It's a big deal. And then one Ugin the Ineffable. I only had two of these, and I needed one more for, for like, modern play stuff or whatever. This is this card's a seeing play. Like, I think it's either three or four of. I don't know. But it's very good. I've always loved this Ugin. Call the spells. You co cost two less to cast, and then you can exile the top card of your library face down and look at it. Creature. Create a 2-2 two -two creature. Colorless spirit creature token. I'll get this correct, I promise. When that token leaves the battlefield, put the exiled card into your hand. And then negative three destroy permanent that isn't, isn't, that's one or more colors. Boy, why was that so hard to read? I don't know. Thank you, Jake. Really appreciate you, my dude. That was a good, sometimes there's packages like this and I'm like, oh God, like a, the knife is great, but this one really wants just a scissor. I just want to chop the top off. Yeah, I'm just going to get a scissor out. We come prepared here. We got a scissor and a box cutter. Oh my god, this is like really tightly packed. Like, it's really in there. Okay. Okay. Oh no. I'm not sure if I got tokens in this one and they gave me a foil token, but there is a foil token included. So we're going to have to see if that was like a mistake or just a gift. We can play a game called Mistake or Gift. And that's where you figure out if the order is wrong or if they just added something to it. This one is very hard to get out. This is like really well. Oh my God. <laughs> it's like, there's so many layers. 
It's like a seven layer burrito from, yeah, probably Taco Bell, but you can pick your, I don't even, I literally can't get this out. Like this is, this is hilarious. I'm like, oh, there we go. Okay. Jeez Louise. Oh no. I think they sent me a foil smog token. Oh, that's a bummer. Why do they do this to me? I don't want your foil. Uh, Minas Tirath enters the battlefield tapped unless you control a legendary creature, just like the Shire. I don't think the Shire, which is the green uh, card from the cycle, is good enough to, to go to the cube, but I do think this one is. This uh, actually interacts quite well with a lot of the cube, cube archetypes that exist. You know, like you're attacking with a lot of creatures and being able to draw a card just from that is pretty good. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. This card seems sweet. Then we have Mor Moria Marauder. Two mana for a 1-1. One, one. Red, red, specifically. Double strike. Two hits. This reminds me kind of like of Warren Instigator, but even more so, it kind of reminds me of Goblin Lackey as well. It's like if Warren Instigator and Goblin Lackey had a baby. And also, this says, whenever a goblin or orc you control deals combat damage. I don't think there's a ton of competitive orcs seeing play, but if there are, that's cool. Exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. Play is also a great distinction to see on a card like this because if it says cast, you can't play land cards because you only play lands, you can't cast lands. So once it says play, that means all the lands you hit off this are fair game, which is great. You can play this on two, attack before your land drop, hit two cards, hit a creature, hit, a, hit another two drop in a land. That's gravy. It's fantastic. In a red deck, you're, you might be hitting two one drops. Uh, this this has a lot of potential, so I, I picked this one up for the cube just in case, but then I also picked up four more because these guys are like 40 cents right now. I don't think this is a card that's going to like go up. This isn't a financial video, but it's cool enough to have a play set, right? It's like, I got a dollar I can spare. <laughs> There's another Mountain Doom. This is going to go on the play stuff. It's 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 a great card, but it's you're, you're probably not going to play like more than one, you know? This is, it's a legendary land. It's a Sulphurous Springs, basically, but... It's got a lot of upside. Palantir of Orthanc. I'm not sure if I went over this in the video I didn't post or in the video I did, but this card seems super sweet. It's also mythic. It's also legendary. It's got a lot of things going for it. At the beginning of your end step, put an influence counter on Palantir of Orthanc. So I play this card on my turn. On my end step, I'm doing something. It does something for me. It's not just like, wait till your next turn. You scry two. So you're always going to scry two no matter what happens. Then an opponent has a choice. They can either let you draw a card or you mill X cards equal to the number of counters. So the first turn will be one. And then they take damage equal to the total mana cost of the cards milled. So this is going to get out of hand pretty quickly, I think. If they don't let you draw a card and then they don't let you draw a card and then they don't let you draw a card again, three turns, that's already six cards that you've milled. And they're taking a lot of damage. Like eventually this will kill them if they never let you draw cards. And you're always going to be scrying. Uh, this card seems pretty good for three mana. It has big, um, big Sin Prodder energy. Is that the card? Sin Prodder? Wasn't he like, you reveal the top card and your opponent can pay the life and you don't draw it. So they would always like deny you lands. They're like, no, you can't have land. Samwise Gamgee. So Samwise says, whatever another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, create a food token. Great. Sacrifice three foods. Return a historic card from your graveyard to your hand. I mean, this card's been seeing a ton of play in modern. It's like a four of in modern right now. And it makes a lot of sense. Like, historic cards are, for those who don't know, this was also, this was a concept that was introduced in the original Dominaria set several years ago. Historic cards are sagas, artifacts, and legendary cards. So, basically, you can return any one of those, and there's a ton of those that are good. <laughs> And combo enablers. This is the smog token that we saw, the foil. I didn't order a foil, I ordered a regular. And this one's also double-sided, which I'm not sure should be. I think most most regular tokens are single-sided. Let me see if I can confirm that in this set. The foil tokens in sets are double-sided. But if you look like a regular token, single-sided. All foil tokens from basic sets, like the Lord of the Rings set, are double-sided. So yeah, this is not the one I ordered, unless this is a bonus, and completely independent from the second smog token I ordered. Flowering of the White Tree. 
obviously great. This is a card I played. I recently put in Wedding Vow in my queue because I thought that was really good. No, 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 no. It wasn't Wedding Vow. It was Invasion of Gobacon because that's a similar two mana. It's a two mana enchantment that pumps your creatures in the cube, right? It, it replaced Honor of the Pure, basically. And I think I'm really tempted to replace it with this. I don't think so, though, actually. Invasion of Gobacon is very good. Yeah, I, this is this is strong competition for it, though. It, it affects all of your creatures, not just your white creatures. Eh, the card's just great. There's the Flame of Anor. That's probably my sixth one, I bet. But hopefully that's the last one. There's, I think this is my fourth Delighted Halfling. Uh, so that should complete the play set. Obviously, this card's seeing a ton of play. Here's another Boromir. We saw him previously. Also very good. So the funny thing is when you see a 3-3 three, three for 3 in white and they have a keyword like Vigilance or First Strike or something and they have a bunch of text afterwards, they're usually going to be pretty good and they're usually going to be a Death and Taxes-esque card. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, if no mana was spent, counter that spell. So that's great. Sacrifice him. Creatures you control get indestructible until end of turn and the ring tempts you. Like, so good. It's like so many things. Like, this is just such a versatile card. And it shuts down like if they have an Ancestral Visions on, on Layaway... You just get to just get to eat it. Relic of Sauron. This is a super cool rare. This card's going for like four bucks now, which is funny because it's a mana rock. But yeah, this is a rare from the Lords of the Ring Commander set. Uh, you can add two mana, or two mana in any combination of red, black, and blue. So Grixis mana. And then for three and a tap, you basically get to draw two and discard one. You get the loot. Like, that's really good for a, for a mana rock. It's a really good mana rock. So I got this for the cube and I got this for whatever commander might, might play. Last card in this pack was Balrog Durin's Bane. I say pack. I think there's a mentality that these are packs for me. This spell costs one less to cast for each permanent sacrifice. Haste can't be blocked except by legendary creatures. When it dies, you destroy an artifact or a creature. 7-5 five for 7. This guy does so many things. But yeah, not bad. That's it though. That's it for the for, for today's for today's little haul. Thank you guys for watching. Really appreciate it. I hope you guys are enjoying these. Let me know what you think. I would love to hear your thoughts. And uh, as always, be sure to follow and subscribe and I'll see you next time, guys.